Yes, sir! Let's go! There it is. Yeah. Have I ever not given you an honest answer? Jaden did that third down pass there. Third and 16? Yeah. What was your reaction there in the press box on that? <laughs> um, just, um, I just couldn't believe it. He got behind him on third and 16. And uh, just to his credit, um, Jaden, that he saw it. You know, he stayed on it. That's his first read, actually, in that, that progression. And so he stayed on it. And uh, it's been a, pro a progress of talking about, look, we have two of the best, two of the best in the country, deep ball guys that can track down deep balls um, with him and Frank. And, and you can see he's starting to trust that a lot more the last two games. He's just letting it fly. Even if they're on this side of him, he'll put it on the other side of the DB and let him track the ball down. So that was just a great play. It seemed like every time Jaden rolled out of the pocket, good things were happening. Yes, you know, and that's what we wanted to do. We knew that, uh, you know, last... Uh, year's game. They brought a lot of inside pressure and, and they're just tough. They're strong and up front, man. And we wanted to, to get outside and make them run. That also makes the big guys, big defensive tackles run a little bit. And we just felt like we could get the edge on them. And, and you know, we have good athletes, man. Uh, we have some really good athletes and let them get in space as well. You've been, you've been doing this a long time. Is yes. still amaze you oh. how, how one game can change perception? It's, un it's unbelievable. You know, I talked to the kids. Um, you know that, you know, God doesn't judge on appearance, man. And thank goodness because, you know, you, I watched them come out of the tunnel. You, you talk about appearance. Those guys look really good. USC looks really good. And some of the teams we play based on appearance, we wouldn't have a shot. But, you know, I talked to him about what's in a man's heart, man. If you can get 11 guys or a, a whole team of guys all with a common purpose and a common goal and just love each other and everybody's going in the same direction, you can accomplish anything. Looks like defensive line run blocking, pass blocking was playing at a different level compared to last year. Yeah, the guys were excited to play. You know, we talked about all week that last year we kind of felt like offensively we laid a little egg up there last year. And we had a lot, and man, let me tell you, we weren't on the right path tonight with like, I don't know how many offsides we got, which is, was very disheartening. We talked about cleaning that up, which we didn't, uh, which we got to get that fixed. But, you know, they kind of felt that way. And uh, actually, in the summer, I gave them one homework assignment and that was to watch the Oregon game of last year write down everything that we did wrong and what was the reason and that's been on their mind all season. Is it difficult when you're up multiple scores in the fourth quarter and you're like trying to lead clock but also you, know, you might need some first downs? And it's very tough yeah so you're going back and forth and I thought maybe some bootlegs and they they kind of got tired of us running bootlegs, I guess, there at the end and uh, got us on a sack. But, you know, you knew they were going to put everybody in the box and you just felt like maybe trying to get outside. And then, you know what, um, it kind of worked to our favor because it kind of took the, the handcuffs off a little bit and said, you know what, we just got to chunk this thing deep. And we got in a third and 16 situation and that actually helped to win the game. Sorry, were able to get the faster start going. I mean, yes. Not get behind. Yes. Do you think some things you did helped to make that happen? Yeah, you know, the first drive was very disappointing because we had that set up all week, and I, we still got to solve the first drive things. We just, we come out, I guess it's nerves, I don't know, you know, and uh, but Jaden settles down after that, and, and everybody seems to settle down after that. And we've got some young guys, and um, so, but, you know, we worked on that all week, and Coach Herm did a, a phenomenal job of emphasizing that to the kids. Every time he got in front of the team, all he talked about was fast start, fast start. Can't let them go down and score, and we got to put points on the board early, and they did that. Jaden do a lot of great things this year, but this, tonight seemed different. It seemed like he even raised his game a little bit. Better. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, whenever you always see this with great players, and they probably, he probably won't say that in the, in the deal in there, but when you're pitted against a, like a senior great quarterback that has a lot of accolades and he's going to have a tremendous career and he's a great quarterback, you kind of like, okay, what about me type thing? And, you know, and so I think he kind of took that and, and, and rose to the occasion and what played like that. Frank Darby, last four games, including tonight, seven touchdowns. Unbelievable. He's the best deep ball guy I've ever coached in 30 years. It's, it's amazing how he can track a deep ball down. What's the difference for him right now? You know, it's just it's confidence in that the that Jaden early kind of would see that he wasn't quite open. And Jaden, when he started out, as you guys saw his progression, he would wait till guys got open. Now he's throwing. Excuse me again. Sorry, he's throwing guys open. So he's trusting it and letting it go. As you saw that on the double move, the safety was way over the top. Let's go. The safety was way over the top, and he just let it fly with enough air that he understands Frank can go up there and get it. A lot of 
lot of teams would get dismayed, things would maybe unravel a little bit. You guys have fought back from de big deficits in some of these games and now this. Like, what do you make of that? This team? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's, a t it's tough, it's frustrating. However, all of those times, those 15 games or so that we have had since I've been here that go down to the last drive helps us in that situation tonight because we've been there, man. We've been there so many times. And to the kids' credit, man, they finished and we got that first. That's probably all the plays and we talk about the touchdowns. The most satisfying thing for an offensive coordinator is when you've got the ball in your hand and the team expects you to run the clock out and we ran the clock out. Man, that is, that's everything to me. You, knew, you said you knew you could, you know, you got the deep threats. Were yes. you curious if you could protect long enough to give Jake Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and so we did some things, and we that's why, you know, we didn't do a whole lot of drop back. We picked our shots. We It was a great game plan by all the assistant coaches and great job during the game, too, with suggestions and all of that. Mm -hmm. After everything that's kind of happened the last four games, how gratifying was it to come down and, like, hug your players and coaches? Of like, oh, man, did this? yes, because we've been hugging them on the other side, consoling them, and, hey, man, just stay with it, stay with it. And, you know, what a great lesson for young kids man because you know in the world that we live in today everybody wants instant satisfaction and we haven't gotten that instant satisfaction this year but man through four games they persevered they came out and practiced they practiced really hard and it just goes to show them and it teaches them man if you just hold on to the rope and don't let go good things can happen to you how you much got do you two interceptions how did you feel like what happened you got points off those how do you feel just about how yeah you know they're really good in the red zone i didn't realize that until uh uh, Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreet told me, and I was like, thanks, guys. Appreciate for putting that in my mind right before the game started. But, yeah, they're amazing in the red zone, red zone defense. They keep you out of the – and they kept us out of the end zone when we get in the, got in the red zone. And they did a really good job. So, man, the defense, you know, I mean, it was, a, it was finally a great team effort that we put together, and, and we all came together and won the game. How much does getting bowl eligibility, especially winning in this way? Yeah, you know, I didn't even think about that until I was in the – celebrating and all that. And I turned around and went, oh, we're bowl eligible. Let's go, man. So, uh, yeah, I'm just excited about that. And then, you know, being able to go into the Arizona game without that little – thought in the back of your mind, all that, uh, that definitely makes things a little bit better going into the Arizona game, absolutely. How, how much do you think that the week that Jaden watched Joey play and he just unloaded deep balls has unlocked the last two? Yeah, abs absolutely, and I talked about that in the room the other day, is that, uh, you know, when you have an opportunity to sit on the sideline and watch another player play, Jaden has never really experienced that in his whole career. Uh, and he, he got a chance to see Joey not just, you know, just let it fly. And, and he saw the guys catch up to it. And yeah, I think that's a good question. I think he learned from it. Did Darby double move, uh, touchdown? Was yes. Two man route? No, it was a one and done, man. One and done. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what was the problem with the false starts? I mean, it was okay. Guys. Yeah, it was different guys. It was. Uh, I think Jaden got a little nervous at the beginning, and he, his snap count was a little off. He did. He did something with the snap count, but we got that fixed. And then, guys were. You know, when when you know that you have a speed rusher on your outside, tackles have a tendency. Man, I got to lean. I got to. I'm trying to time the snap count up. And so when it doesn't happen exactly like you think, so I got to get to the bottom of the other ones. I know about two of them, but I got to talk to the kids about the other ones. But that's totally unacceptable. We got to fix that. You gave the homework assignment over the summer. Yeah. Did they actually do that? Did they yes. Actually every, they all texted me and, gave, and, and, and told me why, um, why they thought we lost. What did we do wrong? Uh, got it from the whole team. And uh, it, was, it was outstanding. And, so, and I did that for a purpose because I, I didn't know, but I mean, I, I figured, you know, this is going to be an important game sometime around here. And we get a chance to play for the, to get into the, the championship game again. I wanted him to think about that and have some, some thoughts about that as they went to start camp. Was Frank especially animated about that, about the homework assignment? Was you don't have to look back, you know, I can't remember everybody's response, but it was all, it was pretty much uh, everybody said that we didn't practice very good that week and, um, and felt like, and, and then this week we had three great, great practices this week. So, uh, and I talked about that this morning to the guys before we got on the bus, man. There's no excuses. Like we went up there, we laid an egg, but there's all these excuses. We don't have them anymore, so it's going to be all on us. Staff or were the players talking at all about what happened with wrestling last night and just in terms of a motivational with what with oh the, the oh yes yes that was awesome I haven't heard anybody talk about it but I was uh following everybody on on Twitter that's that absolutely amazing man kudos to those guys proud of them that's really cool